Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my review of Mass 7 from The Good and the Beautiful. So if you enjoy this type of content, other homeschool and lifestyle content, please remember to subscribe and let's get into it. All right, my oldest son, who is 13, just recently finished Mass 7 from The Good and the Beautiful. These ones are brand new. <laughs> These ones are not his. They're for my next child because she's gonna need it soon. And so I wanted to share with you some of my insights and thoughts about it because Mass 7 is new. It came out last year. And The Good and the Beautiful just came out with Math 8 and it looks very, very similar. We're not gonna be using Math 8 for my oldest child. He's kind of jumped from this Math 7 into Algebra. I think he's doing Algebra 1 <laughs> in Denison Math. And so he kind of jumped to that. He was ready for something a little bit higher and harder. And <clears throat> I didn't know Math 8 was coming out right away either. I still don't think we would have done it. With him, we might do it with some of my other kids that are a little bit ahead in math for their grade. But I'm like, it, I don't know. I have a, what is he, a 10 year old that's about, he'll start math seven by the summer probably because he's a few years ahead in math. So I don't know if I want to jump him to algebra the next year or if we want to do pre-algebra which is the math eight from the good and the beautiful. So I haven't decided that yet. My husband and I are both math lovers. <laughs> My husband especially, he has a minor in math and he just loves it so much. And so he's always like, give him more math, give him more math. And I'm like, I am all for the math, but I also want to make sure that we're keeping it where they need it to be. So we have never really had struggles with math, which is something I want to start with because I know some people that have given reviews about the good and the beautiful, especially since they've come out with their simply good and the beautiful math. Talk about how they used to have struggles with math. They had, it was lots of tears and it was just really hard. And I don't have that perspective. Obviously we have days when all schoolwork is frustrating, but we don't have specific moments where it's like, oh, we just really hated math. We switched it to the good and the beautiful and now amazing things happened. We have used the good, like the simply good and the beautiful math almost from the beginning because it was available pretty early on. I probably second or third grade for my oldest is when we started using it. When I finally figured out what we wanted to do with homeschool, it took a few years because we started homeschooling him when he was in kindergarten. And so that's when we started using it. And so I have the rest of my kids, the three next children, and my two youngest will use it as well, but they're just not in school yet. But the three next children have been doing the Simply Good and the Beautiful math from the beginning. I love it so much, all of it. It's all great. <laughs> my husband even gives really rave reviews about it and he's a pretty tough critic when it comes to things, especially when it comes to math or economic things. He can be very, very critical about stuff. So the fact that he likes it is good. And so I wanted to just touch on a few things about Math 7 that stuck out to me, that we liked, or whatever, because it is slightly different than some of the younger grades in the Good and the Beautiful Math. And I imagine Math 8, at least from what I'm seeing and the reviews I've seen, will be similar. And if you want a review, or at least a little bit more information on Math 8, Ashley from Grace and Grit just posted a video, maybe last week by the time this comes out, if you want to go and get a little bit more information about it or at least see some of the pages or whatever. So a nice thing about this math, about Math 7, is it's split into four books. Because as you get into older grades, math books just get bigger. It's just kind of the nature of things. So Math 6 is two books. And then Math 7 is now four books, which is very convenient if you do quarters with homeschool, or even if you just kind of split your year into that and think about it that way, even if it's not really specifically planned, then you can just have them work on one book per quarter. <laughs> and hope, you know, like it's a good gauge, like if we're getting through this book, that means we're doing a good job for where we need to be for the quarter. It's also manageable if you need to take schoolwork on the go or whatever, it's just one smaller book. I keep the other books that they're not working on in like our closet back here or stored somewhere else so that they don't have them all like in their drawer because that would be a lot. And so I keep them someplace else. And then sometimes they keep them in their drawer once they finish a book because if they need to go back and look at a concept, 
then they have the book already because there's a lot of review and things like that so they can just easily go back. But I do love how there are four books. So it comes with these four books and then it comes with an answers and solutions guide. All right, I'm gonna just do a little bit of an overview of maybe what a lesson kind of entails. Sorry if my voice cuts in and out. We've had some sort of sickness. It hasn't been like crazy, but it's also been just a little bit weird. And so it's been more like in my lungs and stuff, but very mild, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, and like it's mostly gone, but it's still just kind of a little bit lingering. So when you go to the first lesson, it will have a warm up page, which is similar to the younger grades. They always have some sort of review, warm up type of thing, just to kind of get into what you're doing. And then it has a lesson. <clears throat> so with these, as with a lot of the younger grades as well, there are videos you can watch for the lessons. And I, so you can also just teach them from the book. There are, is a lesson overview in the book. You can just go through it. You can look at the lesson overview if you want to do that with your child or if you want them to just do it by themselves, they could go and do that. Some of my kids have done that in the past and with this math and with some of the younger grades math, I feel like they don't pay as much attention or they just kind of skim through it when that's the case. And I don't have time to sit down with each child <laughs> That's the point of them getting a little older and more independent and the math does get more independent. Like they don't need my help as much. They should be able to do it by themselves so that I can focus on the kids that need me to read everything and try to explain things a little better and teach it to them. And so when I noticed there was little bits of struggles going on or missing similar things, I was like, how about we just watch the video lessons? And so now that is part of their assignment is watching the video lessons. Again, you don't have to choose to do that. I just feel like they do much better when they watch the video. And there is a spot in here for video notes. So as they go through it and watch it, they can do the video notes and it goes through the lesson, explains everything. And then it just seems to have gone much better now that they're doing that. And then it will go into practice. So whatever they just learned in that lesson, it gives some practice problems. There's not a crazy amount, but I feel like there is a sufficient amount of practice problems. And then there will be review. And so some of the first ones obviously is more just practicing some of the things they would have learned before. And then as they get further on, the review will go back to previous lessons. Usually it will reference the lesson by the review. So if they aren't sure how to do it or they can't remember, they can go back and look at it. And so my kids will be like, oh, I just guessed. I didn't wanna go get the book. I'm like, no, go get the book. Like you need to learn how to do this. It's important for your learning to be able to understand how you look things up, that sometimes you aren't gonna remember everything, that you're gonna to have to put in the work to do it. You can't just guess <laughs> and hope that you get it right. Okay, sometimes that works, but there's a lot of times it doesn't. So <clears throat> the review, is really helpful that um, the good and the beautiful's math is all spiral approach which i know some people prefer more mastery approach we have done some mastery approach like at the very beginning of our homeschool and i far prefer spiral approach it has helped my kids so much it's helped me so much like it just is much better for all of us to have it this way and so that's just what's worked for us so that's like a basic lesson and these lessons actually in this book um i feel like they go faster i don't know if they're a little bit shorter we'll see with my next child because uh, she understands math it just takes her a little longer but she also is usually more accurate <laughs> my boys will rush through a lot of things and so even though they know how to do it they tend to make more little mistakes where she generally ends up being more accurate even though it takes her a, a lot longer to do it. So for my oldest who has already done math seven, that it was like 30 to 45 minutes, if that. It was very, very quick most of the time. And at the end of each book, they have unit reviews. So it has a whole bunch of games usually, sort of more like games type of a stuff or logic puzzles or things like that. Like it's incorporating what they learned, but they try to make it a little bit more fun. And so they can go through that at the end. And then there's an assessment, 
which I appreciate because then it can help you know if they really are understanding what they are learning. And then it, again, by the assessment questions, references the lesson. So if it is something they are struggling with, you can go back, look at the lesson, and talk about it and figure out what went wrong. And then there's usually a few other like enrichment lessons after that. So I feel like these are kind of optional. My kids have always done them. Like my oldest has done them. They've done them any sort of extra activities in all their other books as well. But it also is like if they finish the assessment, you feel good about it, they can move on to the next book. If not, you know, or if they want some extra fun or practice or whatever, they can do those. So there's enrichment activities at the end. And then throughout, I feel like I'd have to look for sure, but I know my son would get like logic puzzle pages sometimes, which was fun for him. And so it seems like every once in a while inter interspersed, <laughs> is that the right word? I don't know, it sounds really weird. But in throughout the whole book, there were occasional logic puzzles or just kind of a brain break. You know, I don't know. I wouldn't consider logic puzzles a brain break but it's a break from the normal lesson and routine that you're used to and you get to do something else okay i just flipped through these books trying to find a logic puzzle because i'm like i'm not going crazy right these are in here i have seen them before <laughs> and sorry i was not on the ball and looked them up before but it's been kind of a crazy week and me not feeling well hasn't helped but so there's something like this every once in a while i didn't find any in this one it doesn't mean there aren't any one i was just flipping through it quick so it just has some logic lessons in here that I think it's just a few pages. So, you know, it has some of these, if you remember these types of formats from school, you know, the little puzzles you got to do and figure out which thing went with which animal or which person was wearing what, you know, or whatever by the clues it gave you. And so then almost a, this is almost like a Sudoku type thing as well. So they have those every once in a while a fun like a little bit different thing and i just wanted to show you because at first i was like am i just making this up let me make sure that i'm not making it up when i can find a page but i found one it's there so i think that's fun too just to have something to change it up just a little bit the last thing i wanted to mention about mass 7 that i love so so much that is like an absolute game changer for mass 7 and math 8 is this answer and solutions book this thing is amazing. This is for all the lessons. It's all in one book. And I love this. I wish <clears throat> they would do this for some of the younger grades. So like I said, my husband and I are pretty competent in math. He is way more competent <laughs> in math than I am. But I can look at a lot of things, help my kids with a lot of things, but there are some, concept, some concepts that I haven't done in a really long time. Or if I'm just coming into their lesson and don't even know what they're doing, I'm like, wait a second, what is going on? <laughs> it's really hard for me to know where to tell them they went wrong or how to do it or whatever. And so the other math units from the Good and the Beautiful, like the younger grades, have a lot of them have solutions manuals. I wouldn't say all of them. I don't know if it's true that all of them, because some of the youngest grades, I don't know if they do. But I know as they got older, I have solutions manuals for a lot of those math, um, math, what do you call them, assignments. <laughs> a lot of those math books, I have the answers manual for them as well. <clears throat> but this one goes through all the, like how to get to the answer. It gives you those solutions, which most of the time in the younger math books, the answer is it's just the answer. Occasionally it will have a little bit more work probably because they were supposed to show something. And so it's like, this is the shown work and here's the answer. But a lot of times it is just the answer. So in here, it is amazing because it will go over, you know, some things will just have an answer again, but it has the warm up answers that are at the very beginning of the lesson. It has the practice answers and shows you where to put them, shows you what you're supposed to do. If there's a certain way you're supposed to be working it out, it will list all of that for you and makes it so easy. So if I have a kid that is struggling <laughs> and I don't know what to do, usually I send them to their dad when I can't figure it out. I'm like, go ask your dad. <laughs> but if I am trying to figure it out or my husband is not here, then for math seven, this has been awesome to be able to look at it and to go through and be like, oh, this is how it wants you to do it. 
or it just helps me if I'm trying to help them at a quick glance to be like, oh, okay, I understand now what you're trying to do. I just needed to see the process and now I get it. And so then I'm able to teach them. But this is, I feel like super comforting for people, like it's helpful for me because I don't want to go through and do all the problems even though a lot of them I could. But it's also very helpful for people that maybe feel not so great about math. Like it's a struggle, I know it's a struggle for a lot of people. Math just has a bad taste for a lot of people which makes me really sad because I love it so much. And I love it way better than like language arts types of stuff. And so this I think is makes it so you can do math with your kids <laughs> and makes it not so daunting of a task. This solutions manual is very, very helpful. And as far as I can see with math eight, they did the same exact thing. And so I am just like, I love this thing. It is so, so helpful. And so if there's anything <laughs> that sells you on math seven or math eight, it should be the solutions manual because it really is the winner of the whole thing. So I just wanted to quickly mention how we go through math. So like I said, they do the practice problems. They watch the video because I just found that is best for my kids and it makes it more independent. I don't have to do as much because they can watch the video and learn what they need to learn. Obviously, if I need to help with something, I'm here to help with something. And so they do that. They do their practice problems. This is all of my kids, okay, that are doing math, except my third, she's almost second grader. <laughs> she's on third grade math. So she's in second grade, but on third grade math, they don't have video lessons yet for that age group. And so all that stuff, I work with her through that. But for my kids that do have videos, that's what they do. They do their practice problems. They do all their review problems. Then they put their math on the counter and usually I cannot grade it right away. I have too many kids doing too many things to be able to grade it right away. And so I will usually around lunchtime get to it and I will grade it. And if it's, if they're around at that time, I might say, oh, look at this real quick and tell me what you did wrong. If they're not around or if it's a little bit more involved, then I'll have them look at it the next day. But I like to have them, they have to go back and correct it. They have to fix it. That's part of finishing their math assignment, whether it's the same day or the next day before they start their new math assignment, they need to go back and fix what they did wrong. A lot of them can do it without asking for help. Once they look at it again, they realize what they did. There's sometimes when they do need more help, obviously. So that's kind of what we do. I find it's the best thing to help them actually notice their mistakes, learn what they're doing wrong, and recognize that it's important for us to go back and fix our work because that's where really good learning happens. And I want to address it as quickly as possible so that they it's like fresh on their mind and before they do their next assignment. Because sometimes when they don't address it before their next assignment, they make the same mistakes again as they do like review or other problems if an assignment builds on the next one. And so I like to make sure that we try to get it addressed as soon as we can. It doesn't always happen, but ideally that's what we like to have done. So make sure all their problems are done. And then I'll look over it, check it again. If everything's good, then they're good to go on that assignment and they can move on to the next one. So that's kind of how like we go through a typical math assignment. All right, so that's my review of Math 7. Again, this thing, I love it so much. The solution <laughs> manual makes the whole thing worth it. And I, I just really have enjoyed all the math from The Good and the Beautiful. We love it so very much. My kids have learned a lot. It really has provided minimal tears, <laughs> mostly happiness, <laughs> except when they get mad that they have to finish their math assignment and it's taking longer than they would like. But other than that, usually it goes pretty well. And so if you enjoyed this type of video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. I can try to review other curriculum. Most of the curriculum we use is from The Good and the Beautiful, but if you'd like me to go through different units or even some language arts or maybe work through a lesson with my kids or something and see it more that way, I'm happy to do that. Just put down in the comments maybe what you'd like to see. And I will try to help in any way I can. And I will see you next time.